Hello, welcome to my little video about how I perceive this split flap display used for train departure indicators to work. The individual unit is currently standing on its end. This face being the rear of the unit and this face being the bottom. You can see that there's a peg here which would be used to locate the unit inside the case. The case would normally comprise of at least two units, sometimes three, repeated on each face of the case, pointing up and down the platform. This end is identical to the one at the other end. So the opposite end still contains a motor, an intermediate gear wheel, and connections to the shaft which drives the flaps. I'll explain how this fits in later. So if we look at, turn it round and look at how the flaps are connected. Due to the fact that I am working on the motor at this end, this unit is now actually upside down and this is the top. So the flaps are inserted into the unit into these discs and these discs are driven by a peg on this shaft. The disc, each disc has 30 odd slots. The end of the slot, the far end of the slot being a circle. The flaps have a section cut out in them and there is a piece remaining which enables the flap to rotate within the circle which is the, at the bottom of each slot. So assuming this unit is around the correct way this flap would be displaying thus. It would be held there by the fact that its edge is caught on this bar. When the motor is next energizes and steps, this flap will then clear that bar, drop down through nearly 180 degrees, cover the previous flap and show the reverse face. Obviously what would have happened also is the flap next in sequence would then be displaying its face thus, giving you the indication, the description. The next click of the motor would again drop this top flap down, it would again rotate in the slot on the disc and display its reverse face covering the previous flap and so on and so on. The components arranged at this end are the motor and this relay. The motor consists of a large DC coil, the magnetic force from which is conducted round to the armature inside here which has six pole positions. So it takes six reversals of current to rotate the motor through 360 degrees. That rotation, single rotation of the motor, does not rotate the flat drum one revolution. So it's geared down through this intermediate reel, wheel. This relay <coughs> is mounted <coughs> excuse me, and at the back so that this latch is running close to this intermediate wheel. On the intermediate wheel are pins which engage in this latch. And you can see that with the relay in its non-operated position the, the latch is at its highest point. If I operate it manually you can see it drops. So no current in the relay means that when the motor steps the intermediate reel wound to a pin, 
it will hold it and prevent further rotation because of the fact it's engaged in the latch. This is obviously a mechanism used to determine the actual position of the drum and it's proposed to change that to one where a micro switch is operated by a peg on the intermediate wheel thus we can determine the position of the drum. So the DC motor is driven by reversals in current. So what we have here is a toggle switch with a centre off position and we does not when operated to the left or the right does not stay there. It releases once you take your finger off. It is wired so that the centre connection connects to the left connection when the switch is thrown to the left and when it's let go it's back in the centre off position. When it's thrown to the right the centre connection is connected to the right hand connection. Separate connections are repeated on the other side of the switch so we have our two wires for the circuit. The power supply is on the left and it's wired to the far end of the switch on a crossover arrangement and the power to the motor is taken from the centre. So when the switch is thrown to the left power is supplied to the motor in one polarity and when the switch is thrown to the right power is supplied in the opposite polarity. Changes in polarity will cause rotation of the unit. The proposal is to replace this switch with a relay and the relay to have the same contact arrangement and the coil driven from a relay shield for Arduino. This is used due to the voltages generated by the motor. The Arduino unit will be fed the information on the position of the micro switch and programmed to give the required rotation of the motor to give the requisite display on the flaps. Thank you for watching.